Hi, let us talk about the design for the bending resistance of a beam. If you observe from the previous videos, in the examples, when come to the solutions, sometimes you see a series of equations are being used in the process of solving the questions. However, some other times, you observe the solutions are worked on the basis of the stress block diagram. A similar pattern is also observed when come to doubly reinforced concrete. Sometimes you see a series of equations are being used, and sometimes you see we need to work out the stress block diagram in order to come up with these solutions. Now the question is, why is it so? When to use the equations, and when to use the stress block diagram? In order to answer these questions, first you need to understand the concepts in designing for the bending resistance. Designing for the moment is for the ultimate limit states. This links to the factor of safety of 1.35 and 1.5 for GK and QK. You will need to go through a series of analysis of the structure, work out the most critical case in order to determine the moment acting onto the structures. This involves the considerations of various load combinations when come to the continuous member. Second, the moment resistance is derived from the stress block diagram. This is work on the basis of two equations. First is about sigma fx equal to zero and then determine the total end which shall be equal to the moment resistance. For a typical singly reinforced concrete, there is no compression steel bar. Using the principles of static equilibrium, the total force in the steel bar here shall be equal to the force in the concrete stress block. In order to determine the moment, of the singly reinforced concrete. You can use either the force in the concrete or the force in the steel. Multiply with the lever arm to get the moment resistance of the section. As for the doubly reinforced concrete, we have compression steel bars. This leads to an additional force due to the compression steel bars. So, when you work out the sigma fx equals to zero, the force in the steel shall be equal to the summations of the force due to the compressions, which are due to the concrete and also due to the compressions steel bar. Now, in order to determine the moment resistance, we will use the concrete and also compression steel bar Multiply with the lever arm, representing the distance from the respective force to the centroid of the tension steel bar. Of course, you can get the moment by using the total force due to the tension steel bar, except that you cannot accurately determine the actual lever arm, as you have two forces here. It is still possible for you to determine the actual lever arm. Then you will have to determine the resultant force of these two, which is relatively tedious. Therefore, you may simply use these equations to determine the moment resistance. You see a common pattern in terms of the solutions here. First, work out the stress block diagram, and then Find the parameters by using the equations of equilibrium and then determine the moment resistance. This is about the second concept. Now the third concept, it will be we can use the equations in order to design the amount of shear reinforcement required in order to generate sufficient spending resistance of the member. Among the equations include finding the K, checking the K found against the K balance, 
which is 0 0.167 in order to determine whether these sections is singly reinforced or doubly reinforced. If the members is singly reinforced, this will be easy. Your next step it will be finding the Z and then getting the S. The Z found here shall be substituted into the equations for the S. Now in case of doubly reinforced section, this shall involve more equations which include the S, S prime, Z. Now this lever arm Z here is worked on the basis of the care balance which is 0 0.167 this will give you z equals to 0 0.82d and then there will be a process to check whether the compression steel has yield if it has yield you will need to use the design stress if it has not been yielded then you will need to find the actual stress within the compression steels now, having these three principles established, let us come back to the working example that we mentioned just now. By looking at the question here, the design moment is given. The question asks us to determine the area of the tension reinforcement. And if you observe the solutions, equations are being used. The final outcome, it will be the area of reinforcement. Now, if you look at another example, this time, the area of reinforcements are given. The question asks us to determine the moment. To solve this question, you will need the stress block diagram. Find the sigma fx equals to 0. Determine the s, which is the height of the stress block and then the x for you to determine the lever arm and then get the moment by having the steel force multiply the lever arm a similar pattern can be found in the doubly reinforced concrete let's say this example the ultimate design moment is given the questions ask you to determine the area of reinforcement from the solutions a series of equations are being used. As for this example, the areas of reinforcements are given. The question asks us to find the ultimate moment resistance. And when you look at the example, this shall be worked out on the basis of the stress block diagram. From here, you can conclude that the main difference between the two examples it will be the information given and what kind of solutions are expected. If the questions give you the moment asking you to find the area of reinforcement, you will use the equations to solve it. Same goes to doubly reinforced section. Only that the series of equations vary slightly. Now, if the questions give you the areas, asking you to find the moment you will have to construct the stress block diagram use the principle of static equilibrium sigma fx equals to zero to work out the parameters and then for you to determine the moment resistance same principles apply to the doubly reinforced section when as and as primes are given that means given the area of reinforcement for tension and compression and you need to find the moment resistance of the section then you will need to construct the stress block diagram again follow the two steps finding sigma x equals to zero and then getting the moment by having the force multiply the lever arms since you have two forces one is from concrete, another one is from compression steels. Then you will need to work out the lever arm accordingly. Now, what is the main difference between singly and doubly reinforced section? In the equations, 
they are K balance and Z balance. The K balance and the Z balance are work on the basis of the X balance, which based on the definitions of Eurocode, it is equals to 0.45D. In the actual case, the X balance should be equals to 0.617D. Just that as the safety measure, the Eurocode set it to be equals to 0.45D. That links to the Z balance and K balance being used in the equations. Now answering the questions. When to use the equations? It is when the moment is given and you are asked to find the AS. And when to use the stress plot diagram? It is when the AS or AS prime are given, asking you to find the moment.